Welcome to our channel where you will learn how to save hours of your time every single week. Hi everyone, in today's video we are going to review the maintenance tracker and schedule video that I made last week. So this is going to be part two uh, and this week what we're going to focus on is building a QR code uh, integration or API connection so that you will be able to take that QR code, attach it to your piece of machinery or equipment and then from there scan it with your phone it will open up a link uh, and link you to an Airtable uh, shared view page and then from there there will be a button that you can press and it will allow you to easily and quickly add a new maintenance log or new maintenance record for that specific piece of equipment so uh, let's get into it here i will share my screen and uh, we can get started. So the first thing that we need to do, or first few things we need to do before we even touch uh, the QR code information, uh, we have to set up our table and our base so that uh, we can pass the information needed to the QR code API. So let's go over to the maintenance log here. Um, as you can see, I'm using the exact same uh, template that I used last week in the video and if you go to the actual equipment and machinery field um, previously it did say equipment and machine machinery but for simplicity I've just changed it to equipment and you will see why shortly here so anyway this is the table that you need to be on if you go in and click views and form we'll create a new form name it whatever you want And from there, we will leave everything as is and click the share form button and we can open it. What we need to do is set up a pre-fill form. So there will be some parameters that we add to this URL here that will automatically based off of your selection, <coughs> select your, <coughs> excuse me, machinery or equipment uh, from this list. So essentially what's going to happen is you will have a QR code on that piece of equipment. You'll scan it with your phone. It will open up a shared view and it will go directly to that uh, piece of equipment. And then from there, you'll be able to see your last maintenance date and there will be a button that you select and it will open up this form, but it will open up the form with the equipment already added. And you can imagine if there was a long list of 50, 100, 200, whatever pieces of equipment, um, that will make things a lot simpler rather than searching and scrolling through a long list. So how we will do this is we will go back over to the maintenance tracker and equipment and machinery and scroll across and we'll add a new um, field. You can see here I have this already um, added that wasn't there last week. We will get into that shortly. But for now, we will add a new field and we will call this record ID. And it will be a formula. And we will bring in the record ID. And that's all that it is. It shows the record ID for that specific record. And now if we just copy one of these, it doesn't matter which one. And go back over to the form and go up to the link here. Add a question mark. That means that uh, it is going to start looking for parameters. And what we'll do is the name here, equipment. We'll have to use that and make sure it is, uh, I believe it is case sensitive. So first we'll type in prefill underscore equipment equals and then we'll paste in that record id and then when i hit enter you'll see that it uh, instantly adds that specific uh, record to the form for you so um, so that part is is done automatically so that is how it will be set up for sake of simplicity what we will do we'll just get rid of up to that record line and we'll leave the rest of this and copy it. Go back over to your maintenance tracker. In the equipment and machinery table, 
we will add a new field and this will just be called open maintenance form and it will be a button type and we can call this maintenance log or form whatever you want pick your style we will in quotes add in the template and then we'll use a concatenate and at the end of the quotes add a comma and then bring in the record ID field that we created. So this button field, what it's doing is concatenating this link that we're bringing in, excluding the record ID that we had used previously. And then we're adding the record ID to make it unique to each record. So now I should be able to click this button and it will bring up the form with that specific piece of equipment added to it. So that's step one to this process. And now we will get into um, the next step. The next step, we need to create a shared view. So what we're going to do is just duplicate this view. We can call it whatever we want. I'll just say shared view. And we will limit the fields that are shown. I'll hide them all except for I will bring back in the open maintenance form button and the last maintenance date. And what we will be doing is going to the shared view button here, create a shareable grid view. I'll turn that off for this use case, but you can go through those on your own and figure out how you want it to be uh, shown to your users. And when I select this button here, it will open up my shared view. So right now the user will see, only see uh, the information that I have limited to them. Um, and then from here, what we're going to do is expand the record. And now this is the view that is going to be uh, directly used based on your QR code. So here, what we want to do is um, copy from, the, again, the HTTPS all the way over, including the view code there up to that slash. So where it says rec, and then there is a random string of characters. Um, that's where you want to stop just before that R. And you can copy that, go back over to your base, switch your view back to your main grid view that shows all of your fields. And then from here, what you can do actually with that link that you have currently, just bring up a notepad or something and you can save that to the side for now. I will show you how to set up your QR code generator. Um, and in the description below, there's a link that will show you the QR code API and documentation. It is pretty straightforward. Do not uh, be too worried about going through it. So we want to navigate over to, so from here, I guess you can click directly on this create QR code. This is the documentation. Um, and again, it's pretty straightforward. Here's a simple or a sample um, call. And all it's doing is all that you should be concerned with is after the parameter um, identifier, which is the question mark. So this would be 150 by 150 pixels. And right now, if you scanned that QR code, it would just show up with uh, example as the data. But what we're going to do is add a URL um, to the data uh, parameter here. So again, click this link, brings you to the documentation. There's all sorts of parameters that you can enter. There's only one mandatory parameter, which is data, which makes sense. You need to pass something to the QR code which is the uh, URL that we will be using. Um, so what we can do here is you can take this directly and copy it over, and then we will modify it from there. Go back to your maintenance tracker. You'll need to create a QR code 
and call it this specifically with the proper uh, capitalization QR code generator. And it's going to be a formula field. I've already got it set up and to customize. So QR code generator formula, we're going to create a concatenate field and inside the quotes, we're going to add our link. This is the API link. You can see mine above looks a little bit different. So that's how we're going to get it to match. What we're going to do is delete that up to the question mark. And we're going to write in margin equals, and you can pick whatever you want, but for scanning purposes and printing purposes, um, in a later step, I like to use 20. And then we will add another parameter, the and data equals, and then you'll close your quotation. So you can basically copy this exactly. I'm going to delete this, copy this exactly. And that's the start to your QR code generator formula. So I'll save that. If I go and click on it, it'll show me an error because I have not passed any information to the data uh, parameter there. So what we need to do is open up your notepad. You're going to copy that link that you just used or that we just copied um, from the shared view. Go back to the, your field, customize. Because it's a concatenate formula, we can go to the end of your quotation, add a comma, and we're going to type in URL encode. So we want this encode URL component. Um, otherwise, you'll have errors because it will pass characters that are not uh, readable in a address or URL bar. Inside quotes, we'll pass that. And then we'll arrow over to the outside of the quotation mark. We'll close it. We're going to hit comma. And then we're going to bring in the record ID, similar to what we created before. We'll hit save. And now if I select this, if I click this directly, it would open up the QR code. And I'll show you what it looks like. So when you scan that, it will bring you to this view and that will give you your last maintenance date if there was one and allow you to click this button that will bring up your maintenance form with that item added. So again, it's streamlining your process a little bit. So now what we need to do is how do we get this QR code to import to our base? Uh, so uh, what we need to do is add another field and we will call it QR code. Again, make sure um, it's spelt the same and you know, there's capital letters and lowercase letters, exactly the same as my video, uh, because that is how the script that I have pre-written for you uh, will find these fields. If you change them, you can go ahead and into the script and make those changes accordingly, but uh, I will leave that up to you. So this is going to be a QR code. Um, and this is where we're going to store it. So it needs to be an attachment field. And in the description below, there will be a link that you can access uh, the script. I already have it set up. So how you will do that is so select the link below that uh, says script or, or whatever it says, and you'll be able to copy the code. It'll go into um, your extensions over here on the right, add a dashboard, we can add an extension and it's the top right one here. It's purple. It's called scripting Add extension. And the code that you copy, um, you'll be able to paste it here. You'll want to overwrite everything and you can paste it directly in. I don't need that one as I already have it set up. So this is what the code will look like. It's uh, 27 lines long with some space in there. So the important things, uh, and I have some notes here, uh, that the table variable is looking for equipment and machinery, uh, which is the first table in our base, and that we have the QR code field set up. Now, if you wanted to call this something different like QR image or I don't know, 
QR code attachment, whatever, if this needs to match the field in your table, and that corresponds with this one, and then the QR code generator, this is the link that we just created, the QR code generator. So this is it here. And this is when you go to this link based on the QR code, um, it goes to here. So back into the extensions, I'll open this back up. It needs to, this needs to match this as well and everything else should work for you. So now at this point, assuming that your variables in the base or in the script match your fields in the base or in the, the table, um, you should be able to click run. And close this. You'll see that the QR codes get imported. Now, if I select that, and if I scan that with my phone, it will bring up, I don't know if you can see that there, it will bring up that shared view that will allow you to click open uh, maintenance log. So that is how that works. Um, hopefully it is not too complicated. The step-by-step -step is there. I think that is everything for being able to add the QR code and get your shared link set up. Um, so that, that's it for the QR code side. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments below. And I am going to show you one last thing here as well. Um, it's an automation that will notify you when maintenance is due. So it's going to be basing it on the next maintenance date. So if you go into automations, add trigger, when record matches conditions, we'll select the equipment and machinery table, add a condition when uh, next maintenance date is within and you can pick your timeline here and we'll leave it for now as the next number of days so if the maintenance date uh, due date is within let's just say seven days then your automation will run so we'll test the step and this truck won the next maintenance date is November 5th. Today is November 4th. So that means it's within the next seven days. We'll test it on that one. And what you can do is send an email to yourself. So you can put your own email in here, whatever subject line you want, and you can bring in that item directly. So we will call it, um, insert the whole record as a grid. And you can select any piece of information here that you want. I will just bring in a couple of them to test. It look, looks like it needs some additional information, but I think you get the point. It is pretty straightforward um, based off of when a record matches conditions is your trigger, and then you can send an email or there's other things that you can do. Um, you can send a Slack message to yourself if you have a Slack chat going or any, any other method uh, really to get notified when that date approaches. So yeah, again, that is everything for this video. If you do have any questions or if there's anything confusing, please let me know in the comments below and I will try to update and correct the video. Thanks.